Aloha. Welcome to the Mr. G podcast. Today is episode 28. We're going to be talking about the last game of the NBA 2023 NBA season with the Denver Nuggets winning the NBA championship. I'm going to tell you two stories, three stories, four stories, four different concerts that I went to as a teenager, two different Ozfest concerts. One of them I got kicked out of, the other one I snuck into, and then two different concerts uh, that I saw on my 18th birthday and on my 19th birthday. Uh, Broadcasting to you from the outskirts of Chinatown. It is a sizzling 79 degrees here at 9 in the morning in Honolulu, Hawaii, the biggest city in the Pacific, my city, the city I'm from. It's Tuesday, June 13th. I took yesterday off. I did this, I've done this podcast for four weeks now. The first 27 days, I did not take a day off. Yesterday, I took a day off. So today is episode 28. Like I said, the Denver Nuggets won the championship last night. They're probably the most exciting NBA champions ever. Not. However, you got to give credit. Uh, Joker, Jokic, I still can't even say his name. Everybody, everybody can't. Yeah, you know, just call him Joker. Joker is a great all-time great. Watching him play as unlike any other uh, NBA player. And what's going to be remembered is how when the game ended, instead of celebrating, instead of banging his chest, he took the really good sportsmanship route of uh, shaking all of his opposing team members of the Miami Heat's hands and congratulating them. Uh, he's a team player. He gave his team credit the whole time and uh Denver Nuggets have won their first NBA championship after being uh, after 48 years of trying almost half a century of trying and they won a championship all right with that being said give them credit uh Jokic is a great player it's he's unlike any other player where like he doesn't even dunk the ball he's seven foot tall but it's like he can't run fast and he can't jump high which are normally two skills very adaptable in basketball Instead, he just catches the ball very high, and he has great hands and great footwork. He can dribble really well. He has a great three-point accuracy. But as far as his inside game, he catches the ball very high and puts it in the basket before the, the defender can react. And that that's new. In 30, 40 years of watching basketball, I've never seen somebody that uh, he's been working with Murray before they were even in the NBA because uh, Murray is from uh, Canada. Shout out to the point guard, Murray, who played a great game. He's an all-star. And then also their role players are also borderline all-stars with Aaron Gordon, a high first-round draft pick, and Michael Porter Jr., also a very high first-round draft pick. Both of those guys, when they were drafted, maybe four or five years ago, you were wondering, are these guys going to be superstars? Are they going to be all-stars? They're great players. In basketball and the NBA, you can tell generally uh, how the player is going to be good or, or not. A lot of things go into play. But if you look at previous drafts, generally the top picks are the top players. So we're not going to talk hoops very much on the upcoming podcast. This week we're going to do, uh, coming up on tomorrow's episode, uh, we're going to do the five richest people in the world. And then we're going to do the five richest people in Hawaii. We're also going to talk about uh, celebrities that live in Hawaii or call Hawaii their part-time home. That's what we're going to be doing the rest of the week. We're not even going to be talking about hoops very much until the NBA draft, uh, which is in a few weeks too, where the San Antonio Spurs with the number one pick are expected to draft Victor Wimbenyamba, a.k.a. Wimby. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, I'll, I'll go over the four different concerts I mentioned. Uh, because on the previous episode 27, uh, I talked about concerts th that I went to, and uh, it went really well. Uh, the best thing about this podcast is I can do it every day. I barely need to plan what I'm going to talk about, especially if I'm just telling stories. I don't have a script. Uh, I'm just that fucking good. <laughs> All right. So here we go. I don't even need to brush my fucking teeth. No. All right. Especially if you're listening, which reminds me. Listen to the Mr. G podcast at work while you're cleaning the house, while you're working on the car, while you're riding on the bus, because the Mr. G podcast is just like any other podcast. You can get it at your motherfucking podcast spot, whether that be Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, 
iHeartRadio podcast, all of the podcasts. So pull up Mr. G Hawaii podcast, Gregory Brandt, um, and uh, take a listen to the next episode. The next episode. Uh, doing this every day. Like I said, I started four weeks ago. I didn't take a day off for the first 27 days. I took a day off yesterday, but here we are, day 28 again, and I'm well rehearsed. I'm well relaxed. I'm well rested. I'm not really any of those things, but I have some great coffee, some Starbucks coffee in front of me with whipped cream on top, uh, caramel on the sides, and that's all, that's all I need, baby. That's all I need. Yesterday's podcast, or excuse me, on the last episode, 27, I told you about a few different memorable concerts I went to. Uh, today, I'll tell you about two OzFest concerts and then two concerts on my 18th birthday and on my 19th birthday. I'll start with my concert, the concert on the 18th birthday. It was actually the eve of my 18th birthday. My birthday and my twin brother's birthday is on September 24th. This was a concert at a small venue in my neighborhood in Northeast San Antonio, like actually in the neighborhood, like where we hung out so we could walk there. They rarely had concerts there and they rarely had a band this big at this place. I believe it was called Sneakers and The Offspring for some reason had a concert there and this was after they had all their this was uh in the late 90s this was for our 18th birthday so this was like 1997 i believe when i turned 18 yeah 1997 and uh, it was it was the eve of our me and my twin brother's 18th birthday so me and my twin brother jonathan lewis benny and a couple other people we went and saw the offspring and it was pretty cool it wasn't like the other concerts that we've been to like pantera white zombie metallica because it was more like a hipster crowd and there wasn't like really moshing or anything but we were right in front of the stage and it was a really cool concert and it being right there in my neighborhood and right on the eve of our birthday so uh after the concert it ended like at 11 30 and my twin brother michael he we were about to turn 18 and he really wanted to buy a lottery ticket because he didn't smoke smoke and he didn't uh, and he wanted to take advantage of being 18. So he went directly to the store, waited till midnight and tried to buy a lottery ticket, but they wouldn't sell it to him. And uh, he came back like pissed off that I, I couldn't get a lottery ticket. And he waited a few hours, then went back to another store and then came back with like a bunch of scratch off lottery tickets and, uh, you know, lotto things and stuff. Uh, but the concert was good. The next day I went and got a tattoo on my 18th birthday which normally you'd be able to see right easily. And it's right here. It's a leprechaun. So those of you that are watching on YouTube or Twitter, it's not a radish. It's not a, a pirate. It's 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 a leprechaun. I got it on my 18th birthday. So as you can imagine, it's a little faded. I'm actually going to get it covered up. So this is a, probably the last you'll, you'll see of this leprechaun. I mean, you cover it up with a bright, brand new Hawaii flag. And it's going to look awesome. But uh, on this 18th birthday, we saw Offspring. We walked home from the concert. Like I said, it was right in the neighborhood. We used to hang out at El Sendero and, and Perrin Beidel. And the sneakers place was off of Perrin Beidel where the concert was. They used to have concerts there. But at this point in the late 90s, they would never have concerts there. So I guess the band Offspring must have been friends with the owner or something. Uh, for they, they decided to have a concert right there. And it was sold out and it was exciting. The very next year on our 19th birthday, me and my twin brother, and we were hanging out with Jonathan Lewis again. And I had uh, gotten tickets. I had won tickets to uh, Blues Traveler, which was a, is, a, is a good band that I appreciate now more than back then on my 19th birthday. And for some reason, our sister had lent us her Mustang that our father bought her. She probably like felt guilty, like, me and my my brother, we were like treated like shit and made to sleep in a garage. And they were not, treated like his like wives and stuff. And he, on their 16th birthday, they were one of them was given a, a brand new Mustang and the other one was given a brand new Jeep on me and my twin brother's 16th birthday. We were given uh, mattresses to sleep on. And it was kind of like a joke because we'd even have mattresses before that. But on our 19th birthday, for whatever reason, uh, our sister lent us the Mustang. And so me and my brother are taking turns driving it. Then I remember we get to the concert and they're both like kind of dark goth 
not goth, but just like people that wouldn't like like blues traveling. We get to the concert, it's a general admission concert, and then we walk uh into the to the crowd area and blues travelers playing and they're playing some of the songs that I like and stuff, but they're not moshing songs and they're not like da -na 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 -na. and that's kind of like what they were into. And uh, I remember getting there and I remember that right seeing this couple dancing and they were dancing to like one of Blues Traveler's songs and like the guy did a little turn and she did a little turn over under his arm and everything. And then Jonathan and Mike were like, oh, this is dumb. Let's get out of here. And then so we left and uh, we, we didn't even take advantage of having the tickets or going to the concert. And now I really like Blues Traveler and they have some a couple songs that I really enjoy. And the woman I'm dating now, she also likes Blue Tra Blues Traveler. So you think how things change. That was on my 19th birthday. That was almost 20 years ago. That was over 20 years ago. And now if I had tickets to Blues Traveler and the, you know, my current girlfriend, we would really enjoy it a lot more and probably would be the people that got up and dancing that my teenage self was like mocking, like, oh, that's lame, bleh, you know, and that I would be that guy like, yeah, run around, run around, you know. <laughs> uh but yeah so it goes how it shows how things change people change and even though the music is the same you might not be the same person that you were when you originally heard it so that was uh the, my 18th birthday the offspring my 19th birthday blues traveler the two different oz fests i went to the first one was at like the alamo dome and right shortly after the alamo dome opened it was one of the first oz fests and me and Jonathan Lewis, I had gotten tickets from the radio station and we had like seats. So it was OK. And we went and we saw the first band, which was Power Man 5000. And they were known for like having Rob Zombie's little brother as the lead singer. And so we we sat and watched them. But we were in like in the seats and it's kind of like, oh, there's not like standing around moshing with people and stuff. And right before we had gone there, we had stopped at Planet K which is a, a notorious pipe store, bong shop in, in San Antonio, the conservative ass San Antonio. So Planet K has like always been like where rebels go. And so we stopped at Planet K and we got like some new uh, pipes and he got like a mini bong. <clears throat> and we had like a little bit of a bag of weed. And then so we the Alamo Dome was like inside. So we're like, oh, well, we shouldn't smoke in here. So we went outside and we just leaned against the wall and it was a concert and it was the Ozfest. And we had smelt weed at other spots around the venue. And so we're just like, fuck it. Let's just, it's just weed, you know? So we, the second we loaded a bowl and started smoking it, a cop rides up on a bike and he's just a prick. And he immediately just takes our stash, takes our pipes and kicks us out of the concert. No questions asked, nothing, you know? And, and I think, I, I, I don't remember if I had gotten the tickets from a radio station or somebody actually had bought them, but I remember feeling very upset and like gypped. Like these tickets were fifty dollars each or something like that. And then in nineteen ninety eight, and so we're like, damn, you know, look what we got to see one band. And I think Marilyn Manson was playing, and a few other bands that we never ended up getting to see because we got kicked out. So fast forward a few years later, and Ozfest is here again, except it's at an outdoor venue at Rotama Park. And this time I don't have tickets, but I'm I'm hanging out with like these uh, actual metal guitarists. And I've been I was hanging out with them for like a few weeks, like spending the night at their house, playing cards with them, drinking with them. And they were total goth Black Sabbath lovers. Right. And uh, me and the guitarist, we, and none of us had tickets, but uh, me and the guitarist were like, fuck it, let's just go. We'll just sneak in. It's, it was right down the street in Rotoma Park in Selma. And so me and like the main guitarist, who was the main part of their band, went there and we're like standing out the venue and most of the acts had already happened. But he was a huge Black Sabbath fan. And I was like leading the way because I was a few years older, I guess. And I had I had known the area well because I had been to the racetrack a lot. And so I showed him like a little area that we could sneak in. And uh, we start we like got under the fence and started sneaking in. And I lifted the fence up and then he crawled under and then I crawled under. And then as we were walking in, the security saw us. And then so we just bolted into the crowd. And then by that time, Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath had just gone on stage. And so we were right there and we just kept on moving forward, kept on moving forward until we couldn't move forward anymore. 
So we were just set, totally safe with hundreds of people all around us. And then he gave me a look. He's like, all right. He's like, thank you, G. Thank you. <laughs> and I even surprised myself that day. I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm a pretty much a badass. Because before we left, we were in the neighborhood, which was just a few miles away in my mom's neighborhood where they lived. And I was telling all of them, I'm like, we're going to go there. If you put your mind to something, you can do it. And I'm like, we're going to go see Black Sabbath. Are you with me? And then the guitarist was actually the only one. I was like, I'm with you, Greg. I'm going to go. I think I think we'll go get in. I was like, all right. you know. And then we went there and we ended up sneaking in. And uh, I'm not condoning sneaking into concerts because now I see videos on YouTube of people sneaking into concerts. I'm like, get off. That's wrong. Get off my yard. You should pay for your tickets. And they're just running in. How could you do such a thing? But then 20 years ago, I'm, I'm the one that's like, hey, 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 let's just run in. So those are four different concerts that I've been to. Uh, on a previous episode, I went through on, on episode 27. I told you about a few more concerts. I'll tell you about one more concert. And uh, it, it's sincere to my heart. And uh it was Alanis Morissette, just because I love Alanis Morissette. No, it's because the the people that I was there with, uh, some of them are no longer alive. And also uh, my girlfriend at the time, I, I, I should have uh, been a little bit, uh, I treated her uh, more maturely at the end. But me and Benny and Benny's girlfriend, Stephanie, and my girlfriend, Shanessa, we went and saw Alanis Morissette in Austin when we were all living in San Antonio and for the Jagged Little Pill Tour when Alanis Morissette was like the shit. We uh, got uh, were driven there by Benny's dad and Benny's dad had Benny when he was in his late 60s. Benny's dad was born in 1917. His name was Benny Woodrow McGee and he got the middle name Woodrow because Woodrow Wilson was president when he was alive. So that's how old he was. He was born in like 1917 during the Woodrow Wilson administration. And then he had his son, Benny, who uh, also was named Benny Woodrow McGee. And he got the name Woodrow uh, from the same reason. And so uh, his dad gives us, it's a double date, I guess, Benny and his girlfriend and me and my girlfriend. And then we uh, give a, a ride to uh, Austin from San Antonio to Rotama Park. And I remember the opening act was pretty good, but and we were all smoking weed and the like the the ch and chill and stuff. And I uh, I forgot who the opening act was. It was somebody, but I remember we really enjoyed just chilling in the back and just smoking weed and hanging out with each other. Uh, then a last more set came up, and me and Shanessa got like closer to the stage. But then uh, my girlfriend Shanessa, she was. 14 and I was 16 so a huge age difference but it is at that time it felt like such an age difference like she was way too young for me and uh but she was 14 I was 16 and I don't know if she had drank something or you know for whatever reason we were close to the stage and I was just she was just under my arms and all of a sudden she started getting sick and started like throwing up and stuff and then I was just like oh shit and I was like helped her away from the stage then I set down a towel and then we got her some air and then uh, she was feeling better and everything. And then uh, at the end of the concert, Benny's dad uh, got us all. He just hung around like in the parking lot or whatever. His dad was like in his 80s at that time. And he picked us all up. Then he took us to a Denny's and he bought us all uh, Denny's food. And I was so hungry and so grateful for that. And so was Shanessa because neither of us had money. And uh, it, it was really good, but um, I was staying at Jonathan's at the time. I had like a garage apartment. And when we went back, I had Benny's dad drop Shanessa off at Jonathan at my garage apartment. And then I went and hung out with Benny like a dumbass. Like, I'm going to hang out with Benny instead of my girlfriend. And then my girlfriend walked in the middle of the night through a bad neighborhood from my garage apartment to Benny's house. And she was just like, why did you, you know, just leave me or just ditch me, you know? And then I felt really bad. Then I walked about her back to my garage apartment and we stayed there for a little while. Uh, but I really regretted, like, what was I thinking? Like, why did I leave her alone? And uh, I, I had no idea the world was as dangerous as it is. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. 
And uh, looking back, uh, it is kind of significant because uh, Benny's no longer alive. Uh, he he passed in his late twenties a few years ago uh, due to uh, you know an accidental um, the same thing uh, the millions of uh, Amer young people in America have passed in the recent years, and uh, the, and that's uh, mislabeled drugs and fentanyl, and I don't know the exact details or circumstances, but. Uh, he's one of, of millions that of American young people in this country that have died like that. Um, and his dad has passed too. His dad was born like in 1917. So even if his dad was alive, he'd be like 106 or something. But of course, his dad is gone. And Shanessa always had issues of her own. She came from a horrible family and stuff. And I hope that she's around. But, I, I you know, you can't guarantee it. And I've tried to look her up online a few times and I, and I was unsuccessful. I think she maybe she was a, a mechanic or something. But uh, and then Benny's girlfriend, Stephanie, that's the most likely person that's like has a family and is n normal and doing OK. But I hope all of them are, are good. And I'll always remember that night, that that trip to see Alanis Morissette from San Antonio, Austin and hang out with them. It was a really great time. And but looking back, it's like, well, what happens if I'm the only one left? You know, if everybody else has passed, like, did it even happen? Like, is that memory? Uh, the only memory of that is me being alive, thinking about it and, and talking about it on this podcast. But I mean, it happened. And if I don't mention it or if I don't tell anybody, then I just die with that beautiful day and hanging out on the, on the beautiful date, that double date. And uh, it's just uh, it's it's tragic in a way that uh, everything uh, there's a great quote in the famous sci fi movie. But um, it's, you know, our our memories are just like, you know, dream are just like our tears that just vanish. And um, Billy Bob Thornton wrote a great autobiography and in his autobiography. He talks about uh, the, the moment he found out his brother died because he had a, a, a brother that he was very close to. And, and from what Billy Bob Thornton says, his brother was very funny and very smart and very kind. And everybody liked his brother. And uh, his brother was just an awesome dude. Everyone wanted to be around him. And, uh, um, and the, he says the second that he found out that he died, a uh, part of Billy Bob Thornton died. And he said that he'll never be truly happy after hearing that news uh, because his brother was just that good of a person. And he says that, um, you know, I, I don't want to be truly happy because uh, it wouldn't be fair to him. And uh, I actually have a twin brother, a fraternal twin brother, but my fraternal twin brother isn't the greatest guy I've ever known. And when I think about that quote, I actually think about my friend Benny and Benny is no longer with us, but uh, Benny was, uh, Benny was like the best dude that anybody could ever be around. And everybody wanted to be around Benny. Uh, Benny would make uh, everybody uh, feel like that they're the most important person in the world. And a lot of good qualities that I have <clears throat> come directly from hanging out with Benny. So. And when you're that young, you don't uh, necessarily appreciate um, somebody like that. And you think maybe they're a dime a dozen or there, there's a million Bennies out there. But there isn't a million Bennies out there. And uh, Benny was uh, really uh, one in a million. And he, he really uh, liked me a lot. And uh, I was one of his favorite people. And uh, knowing that is... Uh, is really um, like uh, helped build my character and helped build my confidence. Um, knowing that uh, somebody like him uh, actually, uh, you know, held me at such high regard. So rest in peace, Benny. I miss you, brother.